really interesting spot here. I three bet preflop heads up. I bet small on the flop. He flat called. So pot 700, I have 1300 behind. Kind of awkward stack sizes. So I hope he didn't float me with a queen, but I think overall I'm just gonna stick it in here and if he has me beat, he has me beat. I think he folds a lot with like, you know, mid gut shots, like 10-9, but I don't know, if I flat call the turn, I don't think he's gonna bluff the river. So I'd rather just jam and deny equity if he has something like 10-9. Don't give him a free river to hit. Also, he might call it off too. He might call it off with a jack, to be honest. Hopefully he calls. At this point when he's tanking, I know I'm good. There's always that moment. Oh wow, he calls it off. Woohoo! Ship it. What's up, what's up? Alex back in action. We're here for two reasons today. Two reasons. First is we gotta get redemption for that heart on the turn yesterday. That was just so wrong. Um, I had the redraw, I had the blocker. We got it in good. I waited for the moment against the VIP. We're gonna get it back today. I don't like losing. I like winning more than I don't like losing. Losing is just like, ugh, I hate it. So the second reason is I really want a matcha green tea pistachio latte thing that they make at this coffee shop that I didn't get yesterday because it was closed and I really feel like it today. So I'm going to my local coffee shop. It's 7.30 in the morning. Rise and grind. Let's go. One thing I just want to highlight here that I thought would be useful to many of you is just this idea of how important the mental game is and keeping yourself in a positive head headspace. It's easy to get feeling like you're down because we lost yesterday, but it's important to zoom out and look at the macro that we're up. We're up overall. We took some bad beats and it's part of the game, but it's like it has to rub off you like oil to vinegar. Hey guys, thanks for your attention. If you're still here, do me a favor and hit that like button. Also, you might want to subscribe to our channel because we produce awesome content here. A lot of vlogs like these, plus a hand of the day where I review key hands and an Ask Alex show where I take your questions and answer them in future videos. So be sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications because more awesome content is coming at Conscious Poker. Okay, so the first hand in this uh, heads up session kicks off literally I think the third hand I'm playing uh, heads up. I'm playing against one guy at 1020 and he opens to 50. I make it 200 in the big line with ace jack and he calls okay the flop comes uh jack seven deuce with a flush draw i bet 160 so i make a kind of like third pot size bet inducing him to maybe raise or float that's fine i have a great hand uh he calls the turn comes a queen off suit so i check at this point letting him bluff because i want to make my hand look weak I've said this in past videos, but remember, you make money by having your opponent think you have the opposite of what you do. If I come out betting this turn, I'm almost over-representing my hand. It's hard for him to call, and frankly, he has a lot of air on this board. He might have 10-9, 10-8, 9-8. He might have just been floating with something like, you know, maybe he's floating with a queen high, but uh, hopefully he's floating with something like ace high, and he's going to turn that hand into a bluff if I check the turn. I check, he bets 430, and at this point, I'm kind of in a bind. Am I really going to just check call the turn? and then like hope he bluffs the river. He's probably not gonna buff the river if I call the turn. He knows I have something that has showdown value. He knows I'm like committed to this pot. He's not, gonna full, he's not gonna bluff the river. So I decided the best way to play my hand is just to go all in on the turn and deny his, deny his equity. So really force him to either call it off behind and chase that draw or just fold out equity. Maybe he has something like 10-9, he has eight outs and he's gonna play perfect on the river. He's gonna shove if he hits and check if he doesn't and or maybe he has a low flush draw like five six of clubs and i don't want him to just see a free river so i decided to go all in protect my hand also maybe he has a jack maybe he's betting like king jack on the turn or jack 10 on the turn just to kind of protect his hand and like for showdown 
and maybe he's like stuck calling it on the, all off on the turn, doesn't know what to do. So I jam on the turn, he tanks for a while, and I know I'm good. There's just that, that moment goes by when he's tanking, and I'm like, yes, I know I'm good, please call. And uh, he ends up calling, he has King-10 offsuit, and the river blanks, boom, double up right away. Great feeling. This next hand kicks off in a 5-10 game in a really interesting spot because the VIP in the game posts. So he posts in second position, which means he, he antes his big blind in second position, not having to. So you probably know he's not a good player because why wouldn't he just wait for the big blind? Uh, so it folded around to me in the small blind. I have kings, I make it 40. The big blind makes it 120 and the other guy folds. At this point, I could 4-bet, but I think 4-betting looks really, really strong. I'm pretty much never bluffing. It always looks like I'm getting it in. So I decide to just call, and I do so really quick to make maybe, maybe make myself look weaker, make, make me look like a fish, and make it seem like I have a weak hand that just wants to you know see the flop and gamble. So I call really quick. I kind of had made up my mind when he 3-bet that if this other guy folds, I'm going to call and trap. So I kind of had that plan in my head. I call, and the flop comes 9-9-7 rainbow. I check. He bets 80. I could check raise here and just try and get it in against, you know, 10s, jacks, or queens, or maybe he thinks I'm bluffing and he jams with like jack 10 or something. Uh, but I decide to call. Again, trying to make my hand look weak and just planning on letting him bluff. The turn comes a 7, which is fine. I mean, unless he has a 7, uh, didn't really change anything. But it's not a good card in the sense that it's not a card he's likely to bluff again. So it kind of kills or freezes the action a little bit. I check, he checks behind. River comes an 8. And now I wanted to utilize a small bet size. I wanted to bet small because I wanted him to be in a tough spot with something like ace high or maybe pocket tens. And I wanted to entice him to hero call. So I didn't want to bet too big here and then make him fold those hands. Instead, I wanted him to be in a really tough spot and then entice him to call with ace high. I bet 160, he takes for a while, calls it off with ace jack, win myself a nice size pot. All right, few coolers coming up. Uh, the cutoff opens to 50 in a 10-20 game. I make it 160 on the button with two kings. He calls, flops king 5-4, all diamonds. He checks, I bet 160, he makes it 540. I just go ahead and jam. I'm like, I got top set, maybe he has like ace high flush draw, or maybe he has a set and I don't want a blank to come on the turn. If he has a flush, I'm losing it anyway, so forget about it. Um, so I go ahead and jam. He snap calls with fives, <laughs> the turn's a four, thank God not a five, and the river blanks, I double up, boom, great hand. Next hand comes in a 10-20 heads up game. The button opens to 50. I make it 200 in the big blind with kings. He makes it 470 on the button. And again, I decide to instantly flat call. I'm trying to make myself look like a fish. We had just sat down, so he doesn't really know if I'm a pro or not. And I want to keep all of his bluffs in the pot. If I jam here, he's only going to call if I have him coolered. But if I have him coolered, we're going to get all the money in on the flop anyway most of the time. So I wanted to call here and potentially let him bluff or catch top pair. Maybe he has something like jack nine suited or something. He catches a jack on the flop. And, you know, there's already a thousand in the middle. He only has 1,400 behind. It's going to be tough for him to get away from a top pair in a four bet pot. So I call, make myself look weak. And it also protects my range. Uh, and it makes me tougher to play again. So I really like this flat call here. The flop comes jack 10 four, I check, planning on check raising all in. He just goes ahead and jams. So obviously at this point I have a very easy call. I call, he has ace king off, and the turn's a nine, revert blanks, I double up, nice hand. And finally the last hand. So at this point I'm crushing and this hand comes up pretty epic. A lot of coolers in this session. Uh, villain opens the button, the same exact guy, so hopefully he's tilted at this point. He opens the button to 50, I call in the big blind with ace deuce of clubs. The flop comes queen seven deuce with two clubs. I check, and now he overbets the pot, which is not a play you see often, especially on the flop, but basically what he's saying here on this board is that, you know, he can have pocket queens, he can have ace queen, uh, he can have kings, he can have aces, I can't have those hands. I never really connect with this board because what hands am I defending with that are really, really strong here? I mean, the best hand I have is, I guess I could have pocket sevens, but uh, or pocket deuces, but really the best hand I have is something like king queen. Maybe not, I probably even three bet that preflop. So my range is kind of capped, meaning the best hands I can have are something like queen jack. He can have all the stronger hands because he raised preflop. I didn't three bet, so I can't have those hands. So he just comes firing out of the gate, applying a lot of pressure. Little does he know, I actually have a very strong hand. I have a pair uh, overcard and a flush draw. But instead of raising here, I just decide to check call, protect my range, and allow myself to call down on future streets. I'm calling any turn because I have plenty of equity, and it could allow me to get to the river. Hopefully, I catch a flush or two pair of trips and sort of let him continue bluffing if he is. Uh, so the turn comes a nine of clubs, obviously, gin for me. 
I check again. I think it looks too strong to kind of bet here. After he overbets, betting when the club comes doesn't really make sense. Again, I want to make my range look weaker, and I want to make it look like I have a seven or maybe a queen and let him continue bluffing. I check. He checks behind. Obviously, at this point, I know I'm good. I mean, I have the nuts, but obviously at this point, um, I don't think he really has much of anything because I think if he had something, he probably would have bet, at least bet small. Uh, the river comes in offsuit queen, and at this point, I'm thinking, okay, if I bet here, it looks pretty strong, right? I called it over bet on the flop, the flush came on the turn, the board paired on the river. I'm not bluffing that often here. The board was queen, seven, deuce. Like, what bluffs do I have? Um, am I turning a seven into a bluff? Probably not. I can just check and win. So I thought that betting looked really strong. He wasn't going to hero call. And frankly, I thought if he had anything, it's better to check and then go for a check raise. Because if he has a queen, he's going to bet, and I could check raise. Remember, he checked the turn, so using the hand range funnel, it's really unlikely he has two pair or a set. I mean, obviously, it's hard to make those hands to begin with. We're playing heads up, but um, it's just really unlikely he has that hand to begin with. So I'm really hoping he has trip queens. My plan is to check raise and go big. I check. He bets 540, so he overbets again. Maybe he's just getting cute with ace queen, trying to get value from me having trip queens. Um, but I have, I have enough flush. I mean, maybe he checked the flush on the turn, maybe not. Maybe he, maybe he has a boat. Like, maybe he miraculously had sevens full or something. But if he has a boat, I'm heads up. I have a flush. Like, fine. You win. So I jam because I have 2K left. It's like he already bet 500. The pot's 850 at this point. I don't think making it, like, 1100 makes much sense. I'm either bluffing or I'm not. So I think making my hand look more polar, meaning making it look more like the nuts or nothing, is better for me. It's just going to make it harder for him to play, and it's going to put him in a tougher spot with the queen. I jam, he snap calls, he has queen seven, and uh, I lose. But uh, overall, crazy session. So many coolers here in this spot. I feel like it really could have gone either way. Thanks for your attention. Let's go ahead and wrap up this vlog. <laughs>